I would probably share a, a recent case, um, a lady who kept being told that um, the three small ulcers that um, she had um, at the level of her one foot uh, were due to um, a burn that she had sustained before. Um, she did have diabetes and some neuropathy, which is common in diabetes, but unfortunately no one had examined um, her foot and her leg in terms of uh, looking for pulses uh, in, in the, the community. So her journey to diagnosis was quite delayed, really. Uh, only turned up to clinic um, about 11, 12 months after she first um, spotted those ulcers. Uh, by that time, she had suffered with a number of infections, given some antibiotics by primary care. Going back and forth, eventually someone examines her for pulses and ends up in uh, one of our clinics um, and then had uh, a number of endovascular procedures and then a common femoral endarterectomy after six months. Um, unfortunately, ending up eventually with a baloney amputation. Interestingly, we've published an article. Um, my, our team in Leicester published an article about two or three years ago looking at how many times people in England see their GP before they get diagnosed with chronic limb-threatening ischemia, and that's 19 times. So people have to go to their GP 19 times for someone to check their legs for pulses and diagnose CLTI. That is shocking. And so yep. that is something you're definitely hoping is going to um, change, and you're hoping for a policy change um, to make that the difference there. It's not just policy change, it's awareness. Um, yeah, well, we just need to understand that PAD is becoming far more prevalent with the rising prevalence of diabetes uh, and obesity. And yeah, we need to train healthcare professionals a bit better in the immediate future.